Okay, we are now in episode 18, page 53. We are still, it's been a long, it's been a long celebration. We are still at the banquet um, praising Beowulf's victory over Grendel. They brought a foaming cup and offered it to Beowulf. It was taken and given in friendship, and he was given a mail shirt and golden armbands and the most, most beautiful necklace known to men. Nowhere in any treasure hoard anywhere on earth was there anything like it. Not since Hama carried the Brosling's necklace home to his glorious city, saved its tight-carved jewels and its skin, and his soul from Emric's treachery, and then came to God. Higlak had it next, Swarting's grandson, defending the gold, golden hoard. His battle-hard hands had won for him. The Geat's proud king lost it, was carried away by fate when too much pride made him feud with the Frisians. He had asked for misery. It was granted him. He'd borne those precious stones on a ship's broad back. He fell beneath his shield. His body in a shining coat of mail and that necklace all lay for Franks to pluck, for jackal warriors to find when they walked through the row of corpses. Geats and their king lay slaughtered wherever the robbers looked. The warrior shouted, and Welthau spoke. Wear these bright jewels, beloved Beowulf. Enjoy them and the rings and the gold. O oh, fortunate young warrior, grow richer. Let your fame and your strength go hand in hand, and lend these two boys your wise and gentle heart. Gentle heart, I remember your kindness. Your glory is too great to forget. It will last forever. Wherever the earth is surrounded by the sea, the wind's home, the waves lap at its walls. Be happy for as long as you live. Your good fortune warms my soul. Spread your blessed protection across my son and my king's son. All men speak softly here, speak mildly, and trust their neighbors. Protect their lord, our loyal followers who would fight as joyfully as they drink. May your heart help you do as I ask. So, Beowulf's given a necklace. And this necklace is very, very significant because the necklace, necklace itself has gone on a cyclical journey. It was Higlet. Higlax. It then travels from group to group, from warrior to warrior, from king to king, finally to return to Beowulf. So, it was once in possession of the Gidish king. It now returns to the greatest Gidish warrior. That is, in itself, representative of a characteristic and convention of an epic. Look at number, the last one on the second page the role of the epic hero being on a cyclical journey. Wealthel bestows the gift, those gifts upon Beowulf. She also kind of adds a little pressure to Beowulf and pressures him to actually guide her sons in the future. She says, if Hrothgar dies, they are now your responsibilities. I trust you that you will treat them well and that you will do for them what you know is right. There actually is um, this kind of feeling that you know, she's got a lot of nerve to ask Beowulf. He's just saved her country, and now she says, now you need to take care of my kids. But she knows Beowulf's greatness. She also knows, because remember, she's a woman, so she has the ability to see into the future how successful he will be and what his role will be in regards to her family in the future. So let's pick up again. She returned to her seat. The soldiers ate and drank like kings. The savage fate decreed for them hung dark and unknown what would follow after nightfall. When Hrothgar, is with, when Hrothgar withdrew from the hall, sought his bed, and left his soldiers to theirs. Herod would house a host of men that night, as it had been meant to do. They stacked away the benches, spread out blankets and pillows, but those beer-drinking sleepers lay down with death beside their beds. They slept with their shining shields at the edge of their pillows. The hall was filled with helmets hanging near motionless heads. Spears stood by their hands. Their hammered mail shirts covered their chests. It was the Danes' custom to be ready for war wherever they rested, at home or in, a foreign, or in foreign lands, as their lord's quick call if he needed them. If trouble came to their king, they knew how soldiers must live. So, um, in those last couple lines that I read, there's definite foreshadowing of death for the Geats and the Danes. Um, there's another battle that's going to come. It's evident through those lines that they laid down for the last time. Um, the men sleep in and around Herat, 
They've been celebrating for a very long time, days upon days, and they are now full and drunk. Not a good combination in order to defend yourself. Um, the narrator then comments how their shields, their helmets, all of their weapons are around them, as a good soldier should do, as they are always prepared, but um, that will prove to be um, worthless in the battle that comes. 